What's up guys, Arsenal awesome, Mate Analysis here. Can't really wait to talk about Dana White's contender series. It's going to be so exciting if you guys don't know. I actually am a bit of a writer for We Want Picks. I talk about uh, I talk about fights. I write about fights, obviously, make my videos, but I also do a little bit of writing as well. Uh, I guess on the side, I do a weekly article for the We Want Picks website, which is pretty cool. And uh, as always, if you want to throw down some money, Dana White's contender series line should be open. Uh, not now, but later on in the year. Bet US is probably the place to go. Get a 125% sign up bonus. Now let's get into it. Uh, this is my article, so I'm going to be talking about my article here. But I will note a very notable source in Sean Bitter. Uh, he is on uh, Twitter as MMA Wizard with two Zs, and he does have uh, a lot of knowledge. He's got a lot of insider knowledge, and he's the one that really uh, gave me the knowledge I needed to make this. Hopefully, my Chrome doesn't crash, by the way, because I've got so many tabs open because there's so many fighters. But yeah, let's just talk about the confirmed fighters already. We've got Danilo Souza, 9-1. Waldo Cortez Acosta, 6-0. Eduardo Nieves, 5-0. Mikhail Parkin, 4-0. So that's the heavyweights. The light heavyweights are Vito Petrino, who I predicted in my predictions video uh, to be on there. And I'm very hyped for him. Hidolfo Balato, who's 8-1. Umar Sai, who's from France, and he is 6-0. Middleweight, we've got Ozzy Diaz, who was 6-1 from LFA. Joseph Pfeiffer, who was 8-2 and, and has been on Dana White's Contender Series before. Cedric Dumas, who was 6-0. Matij Pinaz, who was 6-0 as well. Ivan Venezuela, Valenzuela, sorry, who was 8-1. Whilst wait, we've got Billy Goff, a prospect I am very, very excited for. Hopefully, he can get into the UFC on this season, man. Very excited to watch Billy Goff fight um, in the UFC if he makes it. And then lightweight, we've got Rodrigo Lidio, who's 12 and 2. Mateus Rubicki, who's 15 and 1. Charlie Campbell, 6 and 1. Nazim Sadikov, 6 and 1. At featherweight, we've got Connor Matthews, who's 5 and 0. Francis Marshall, who's 5 and 0. Eric Silva, who is 8 and 1. And Boy Nazarov, who is 3 and 0, but has a lot of kickboxing experience. Kaleo Romero, who is 6 and 1. Freddie Emiliano Lanez, who is 7 and 1. On bantamweight, we've got Willie and Souza, who's 11 and 1. Farid Basharat, who is 8 and 0, and he is Javid Basharat's brother. Andres Luna Martinetti, who is 12 and 0. Alessandro Costa, who is 10 and 2. Dominic Wooden, a very well known prospect over in England, who is 9 and 4. Jack Cartwright, also from England, who is 10 and 0. Jose Johnson, with 14 and 7 record. Pretty deceiving. The guys that he has fought a very high level, and you'll see when we talk about him later. Flyweight Shannon Ross from uh, Australia with 13 and 5 record. Stephen Arasik, who is 8 and 1, also from Australia. Clayton Carpenter, who is 5 and 0. Uh, Yumi Horiuchi is not fighting on Dana White's Contender Series anymore. He's actually been called up to Road to UFC, which is the tournament uh, that's going to be taking place ahead of UFC 274. And I've talked about that quite a bit on the channel as well. Erison Fahea, who is 11 and 1. Edgar Charis, who is 8 and 3. My Chrome is about to crash, by the way. Aman Ashtimov, who is 12, 3 and 1. It's not. Okay. Women's bantamweight. We've got Hayley Cowan, who's 5 and 2. Claudia Lita, who's 7 and 2. Women's flyweight. We've got Teresa Blader, who's 5 and 0. Oh. Nayara Maya, who's 6 and 0. Oh. And one draw. Denise Gomez, who's 5 and 1. Women's strawweight. Carolina Wojcik, who's 8 and 2. Sanjay Lovato, who's 10 and 2. Victoria Dudakova, who's 5 and 0. Oh. Maria Silva, who's 8 and 0, oh, and fought on Dana White's Contender Series last year. She won, but it was a decision over a short notice opponent who wasn't. Super good. I will be super honest with that one. And um, she didn't get the contract, but she's won since then. Now she's 8-0, and, and she is um, going to be fighting this year, so that's cool. And also Rayanna Malda, Malda, who is 11-5. I'll talk about the confirmed fights. Um, yeah, we'll talk about the confirmed fights right, not, right, right now. Why not? So confirmed fights at heavyweight. We've got Danilo Sozart versus Waldo Cortez Acosta. Eduardo Nieves versus M Michael Parkin. Light heavyweight, we've got Vita Petrino versus Rodolfo Bellato. In middleweight, we've got Ozzy Diaz versus Joseph Pfeiffer. Cedric Dumas versus Matij Pinaz. At lightweight, we've got Rodrigo Lidio taking on Matias Rubicki. The winner of this fight is definitely getting a contract. No matter how they win, they're definitely getting a contract. There's two great records for Dana White's Contender Series. Featherweight, Connor Matthews versus Francis Marshall. Eric Silva versus Anvar Boynazarov. William Souza versus Fareed Basharat at bantamweight. Andres Luna Martinetti versus Alessandro Carlos Costa at bantamweight. There's a chance this fight is actually at flyweight as well, by the way, but it's listed at bantamweight at the moment. At flyweight, we've got the first fight ever announced for Dana White's Contender Series this year. Stephen Arasek versus Clayton Carpenter. And then women's bantamweight, we've got Hayley Cowan versus Claudia Lite. Women's flyweight, we've got Teresa Blader who versus Nayara Maya. Women's strawweight, we've got Carolina Wojcik versus Sandra Lovato. Victoria Dudakova versus Maria Silva, and then the dates of the fights. 
are uh, July 26th every week, every Tuesday, uh, until September 27th. So we've got about two and a half months, that is, of fights, which is very, very exciting. And uh, yeah, as always, just feel free to follow on Instagram, subscribe on the YouTube, and follow on Twitter. Now let's just look into the topology pages of all of these fighters. I'm just going to double check that I am recording, and I am... That's a five minute long intro, guys. That's crazy. Anyway, first fighter, Danilo Souza, 9-1, who is a heavyweight. And, um, yeah, I think that a very good, very good signee for Dana White's contender series. Unfortunately, the, the level of competition isn't really there all the way. But, um, yeah, he recently beat a guy that is 4-0 to earn a spot on Dana White's contender series. And he will be fighting Wildo Cortez Acosta. I said in my predictions video... Um, for Dana White's Contender Series that the winner of Thomas Peterson versus Waldo Cortez Acosta would be on Dana White's Contender Series. That is the case. I thought it was more so going to be Thomas Peterson because I was more hyped up as him as a prospect. But Waldo Cortez Acosta is also very good. He's fought in Bellator before. He's also fought in one of the feeders to... Um, one of the feeders to to uh to one FC as well. I think it's RUF that's a feeder to one FC. He decided to not fight for them. He's got a win over Mo former uh former PFL fighter as well. Great prospect in my opinion in the heavyweight division. Only thirty years old as well. Pretty hyped up for him. Eduardo Neves, who is five and zero, and he is going to be taking on the four and zero Michael Parkin. So talking about Eduardo Neves. He recently won on LFA. LFA is a great feeder promotion for the for the UFC, and he's taken on three undefeated guys in a row to earn that under a five and zero undefeated record. Michael Parkin, who is four and zero, I don't know how old this guy is. Unfortunately, I've got an error on topology, so give me a second for it to load. Hopefully, not every fighter is like this. Michael Parkin, on the other hand, he's fought some pretty good levels of competition. He's also got some uh, kickboxing experience as well, which is going to be very interesting and see how he can uh, bring that into the into the UFC or into Dana White's contender series as it is. All of his wins against guys with even records or losing records, let's hope he can uh, prove himself on Dana White's contender series. Vita Petrino, very hyped up for this guy. He's only 24 years old. He's a very good fighter. He recently beat the 20-8 guard Murad Antaluov over at UAE Warriors. Prior to that, though, he wasn't really beating the best competition, but he was beating them in pretty dramatic fashion, so uh, good for him. Also went 3-1 and one as an amateur. I do like Vita Petrino's chances when he fights Hodopo Balato, who has got a lot more experience than him, who has experience over high-level competition. He's got wins in LFA. He beat a guy that was 11-1, and 5-1, and one, but he did lose. Hold on, this can't be right. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this fight isn't actually happening because he's lost to Vito Petrino, who I was just talking about. Guys, I'm such an idiot. Yeah, anyway, point is, he's kind of went over this guy. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm an idiot. Ignore that. Ignore that. Let's move on. Umar Sai, who is 6-0 from France. I'm um, pretty excited for this guy, too. He's got a couple good wins on his record. 5-0 win and a 2-0 win over at KSW and Aries FC. Ozzy Diaz. Very hyped to see Ozzy Diaz on, on the Danowitz Contender Series. He is 31 years old, so he's a little bit old for a prospect. But he's made a, sta he's made a statement. He knocked out Bruno Assis in the first round. Uh, in a headliner at LFA, and that's his call to, to Dana White's Contender Series. And he's going to be fighting Joseph Pfeiffer, a former uh, Dana White's Contender Series fighter. He lost to Dustin Stoltzfus, and Dustin Stoltzfus is in the UFC now, so not too bad of a loss, really. And then since then, he did bounce back to a guy that was 3-0. and And, uh, yeah, now he's going to be fighting Dana White's Contender Series for a second time. Cedric Dumas, I think Cedric Dumas was in my... In my predictions video as a prediction for 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 a fighter, I'm not too sure though. But he's six and zero. He's been a guy that was nine and five recently. He's a pretty good prospect himself. Matish Pinaz at light, at, I believe at light heavyweight or maybe it's middleweight here. Couple of good wins over an octagon. Uh, octagon is a pretty good proving ground for for regional fighters in my opinion. He's got a win over fourteen and six guy and eighteen and ten guy when he was very inexperienced. So hopefully he can uh, make that work in Dana White's contender series. Ivan Valenzuela, who is 8-1, 29 years old. He's got a couple of good wins on his record as well. Most notably, the 9-4 uh, win over Brandon Kessler, and also maybe the 9-6 win over the Ricardo Centino. He lost early on in his career to a much more experienced opponent. Billy Goff. This is the guy I was telling you guys about. I'm so excited for Billy Goff to... Um, Fight on Dana White's Contender Series, maybe in the UFC. He's actually a welterweight. He's uh, the CES MMA welterweight champion. And he earned that by beating Gary Belito Jr. And, um, yeah, so he became the CES 
um, champion for welterweight there, and then he took on Justin Sumter, I believe a former UFC fighter, former Dana White's Contender Series fighter. He took him on in short notice, and he beat him at middleweight, which is very impressive in my opinion. He's not a former, he's a former Dana White's Contender Series fighter times two, and also a former Bellator fighter as well. But the point is, that's a pretty good win to have, and he took it on short notice up at middleweight. He's going to be fighting at welterweight. I'm very excited to see Billy Goff on Dana White's Contender Series. Very excited. Rodrigo Lidio, 12-2. and two. This is the man that was meant to fight uh, on an LFA this coming weekend at the time of recording. Unfortunately, well, fortunately for him, he got the call today. Now it's contender series, so they found the Talo Gomez, another opponent. He's got great wins on his record, man. This is a good prospect. This is a really good prospect, uh, considering his last loss was his debut. He went on an eight-fight win streak, lost to a very good guy in Herbert Bautista. And then he bounced back against good guys again. Good good level competition, but he's taking on a savage. He's taking on an up-and-comer, a 29-year-old prospect, 15-1, Mateus Rebecki, who has got great wins on his record. He beat Fabiano Silva, 30-12. Magomed Magomedov, 12-2. Kaik Brito, 12-1. Zagir Imabov, 12-2. Like, this guy has whole record. His whole record, even starting off, he beat a guy that was ten and seven when he was when he was one and zero. Oh. His one loss coming to Pawel Kilik, who has actually proved himself to be. He's not the guy I thought he was. Let's be honest. <laughs> Sorry, I thought he was someone else. Um, but yeah, he he he's got good wins on his record since then though. Like he's gone on a great win streak. He had a great twenty twenty one, three wins in a row in the year. And uh, I don't know why he has to fight on Dana White's Contender Series, but if he wins, he's definitely getting the UFC. Uh, Charlie Campbell. Charlie Campbell is a uh, six and one, a lightweight, and uh, he's got a pretty good record himself. Obviously, six and one is very respectable, and he does have good names on there. He's got a six and four and a six and two. He recently won by knockout in the first round and, uh, over in Cage Three FC. So good for him. Nazim Sadikov. Nazim Sadikov is uh, fighting out Sierra Longo, I believe. He's got pretty good wins on his record. He's on a six-fight win streak right now. Unfortunately, a little bit uh, low-level competition, to be fair, but. He has uh, built his record up to be quite impressive. Connor Matthews, who is 5-0. He's got five wins in the first round. He's got one win over the J. Ellis, who's got like over 100 wins at this, uh, 100 losses at this point, sorry. His whole record is pretty padded. I don't know um, how I feel about Connor Matthews at the moment. He's only 5-0, and and all of his wins are to losing records, except for the one over Joshua Mara. But even then, like it's just pretty hard to get a good read on this guy, I think think that this is the guy no he's not I, I was gonna say i think this is the guy fighting francis marshall but i'm not sure i don't know how i feel about connor matthews he's gonna have to prove something to me on dana white's contender series francis marshall was also five and oh but francis marshall has some pretty good wins on his record maybe he isn't fighting no he's definitely fighting on dana white's contender series maybe win or lose maybe he's maybe he, he's hoping to, to win this fight and then he can be on dana white's contender series but same sort of thing, not so great records, but he's got a 7-6 win. If he beats Silver Hatley Jr., he's 9-5, it'll be a good win for him. Eric Silva, who is 8-1, I believe Eric Silva is taking on Anvar Boynazarov. And Eric Silva is on a four-fight first-round rear, rear naked choke streak. And he's taking on the kickboxer in Anvar Boynazarov, who's only 3-0 in MMA. Maybe we can get a rear naked choke for Eric Silver on this one, man. He beat John Pham. Who? John Pham. I just realized he beat John Pham. John Pham is like um one of those one of those brothers. No, he's not. Sorry, I was gonna say he's one of those brothers that's like coming up big time in LFA, but he's not. I'm talking about someone else. But yeah, he's got an extensive glory kickboxing experience. He's even got a kickboxing belt in Bellator. I don't even know if they still do those. But yeah, lots of glory kickboxing experience, and uh, yeah, we'll see we'll see how that goes for him. Uh, Kaleo Ramiro, who is six and one, he's got he's twenty six years old. Once again, all of his wins aren't really against the highest level competition. Jonas Flock, though, I do really recognise that name from somewhere. I don't know where from. Did he fight on Dana White's Contender Series recently? He didn't. He fought in PFL. That's where I recognise him from. But anyway, um, that doesn't matter. The <laughs> point is, that his wins don't look super super great. I will be honest. Now, Freddie Emiliano Laniz, who is 7-1, he's fighting at featherweight, 25 years old, great prospect, great wins on his record as well, 4-0, 3-1, and 3-1 and and as a uh, as a fighter, and also another 3-0 win as well when he's 2-0, so that's pretty ex uh, impressive. We'll see if he can beat a more experienced opponent in his next fight in Dana White's Contender Series. Farid Basharat, the brother of Javid Basharat, who is an undefeated fighter on Dana White's Conte on, on in, in UFC, and he came from Dana White's Contender Series. Unlike Javid, though, Farid has got some pretty good wins on his record. He's got a 16 and 8 win, a 4 and 0 win as well, 6 and 4 win, and now he's going to be up and fighting 
Um, Dana White's continuing series. Maybe he can make it to the UFC just like his brother. Andres Luna Martinetti, 12 and 0 prospects, man. This guy is fighting Alessandro Costa, who we're going to talk about later. As I said, there's a chance that this fight will be taking place at flyweight because his last weigh-in was at 126, but he's classed as a bantamweight. I think the fight is announced to be bantamweight, but point is he's got great wins on his record. Yeah, most recently the wins are a little bit salty, but a 9-1 win <clears throat> in 2021... Uh, five and two win, thirteen and seven win as well. Ain't too bad. But prior to that, though, he was kind of building up the record a little bit. I will admit, but twelve and zero prospect, great, um, great record going into Dana White's contender series. And he's fighting Alessandro Costa, a guy who was ten and two, and a guy who has been fighting savages recently. He lost a split decision to Ivan Hernandez Flores, who's nine and two. He lost to Diego Ortiz. He beat Diego Ortiz, who's eight and two. Beat a twelve and five guy. Beat a ten and two guy as well. And uh, that's pretty impressive, and his last loss was back in 2016, and then he lost the uh, split decision to 2018. Dominic Wooding. Now, this is a guy to be pretty excited about, man. Talk about, I guess, like, quote-unquote, like, a career turnaround, maybe? I don't really know. Like, this guy was... He kind of always was a pretty, like, pretty pretty cool prospect. Like, he was in Bellator, and he lost a couple of decisions in Bellator, but... He beat Blaine O'Driscoll, who's a pretty good, pretty good fighter over in, over in um over in Ireland, and um yeah, I feel like that's probably where his name got the most buzz. But the main, his name got the most buzz when he beat Nathan Fletcher, in my opinion, and then he bounced it back with a good win over Carlos Abreu. This guy could potentially be in the UFC right now, even though he's only three and two in his last, because he lost a couple of times to us uh, a pretty couple of great prospects in Bellator. I'd say more so Fabakari Diata, who I think is like nine and zero oh right now. He's eight and one. He lost his last fight. Oh my goodness. He lost a split decision in Bellator. Wow. Okay, anyway. Point is, um, yeah, he's got good wins. And, and his win over Nathan Fletcher was a big upset as well. Jack Cartwright, 10-0 prospect from England. The UFC trying to build these English prospects. And Jack Cartwright's a good one, man. He's a 10-0 record against good opponents. Uh, including Gerardo Fanny, who's, a, who's actually a really good fighter on the original scene. 9-3 win there, 15-6 win there, 12-2 win as well, 6-2. If Gerardo Fanny won his last fight, in my opinion, we probably will be seeing Gerardo F We probably would have been seeing Gerardo Fanny on Dana White's Contender Series, but unfortunately he lost to Aaron Abi, and we won't be seeing Fanny on Dana White's Contender Series this year. Now, Jose Johnson, who's got a 14-7 and 7 record, a little bit of a salty record, I will admit, but this is actually not too bad of a record if you look into it. All of this guy's losses, including, well, especially the most recent one, Mano Martinez, UFC fighter, Ronnie Lawrence, UFC fighter. Those two actually fought each other, kind of funny. Um, lost to this guy, don't really know him. Levi Moles, though, I believe Levi Moles has a name somewhere, I don't know where. Come on, come to me. Fury FC. Okay, so he's still in the region I've seen, but Levi Moles is still a very, very good prospect. Uh, Casey Jones, don't really recognize that name. Chris Farm, don't recognize that name either. 2 before. Oh my god, I didn't even realize. Okay, so this guy has a 24 and 13 amateur record. What? I didn't even notice. Okay, anyway, the point is, the, the, what I'm trying to say is the, the wins and the losses are very good. Actually, he beat Mo Miller, and this is Mo Miller's shot to the UFC. So what happened was Mo Miller won on Dana White's Contender Series. He was 5-0. and I think he won a decision, and um, the Dana White was like, Mo Miller, I just haven't seen enough from you yet. I need to see a bit more. And then he put together this Fury FC looking for a fight card where, you know, Dana White's, Dana White's looking for a fight on the YouTube channel. And he was fighting um, this guy. He was fighting Jose Johnson. And Jose Johnson submitted Mo Miller when uh, Mo Miller was definitely probably set up to win this fight so we could get him to the UFC, which is crazy. And then he bounced back with a with a KO win in 12 seconds. Okay, I love Jose Johnson. I'm really rooting for this guy. He doesn't have the greatest record, but I will be rooting for Jose Johnson. I love the amateur experience. I can't believe I didn't even know about that coming to the to the to the video. Shannon Ross, in my opinion, um, this is this is his last shot at the UFC. He's had so many cancelled bouts on the regional scene in Australia because there's not a lot of fighters in Australia, to be fair. So it's very hard to get to get good fights uh, in Australia. I will I will um. Say that Ashkan Mokhtarian, former UFC fighter, I think. Am I correct in saying that? Steven Ursig, um, also fight on Dana White's Contender Series, is on a one fight win streak now. He's 33 years old. This is his one shot to get into the UFC. Shannon Ross. I don't see him getting into the UFC um, again uh, if he loses Dana White's Contender Series fight. And that's coming from a New Zealander. Like, 
no disrespect, but I feel like this is this is um this is his time to get it. Stephen Orsig, on the other hand, I think he's like 26 years old, 28 years old, much younger, and he's also got a very good uh, ground game. He he submitted Paul Loger in the Forest round, who's a pretty good fighter on the regional scene in Australia. Submitted um, Shannon Ross, as I was talking about before. He's actually beaten Paul Loger twice. I just realised that, which is kind of funny. But um, yeah. And he lost to Sean Gorsuch, who's actually a very good uh, eternal MMA fighter. Clayton Carpenter is this going to be his opponent. Clayton Carpenter, I know he's got very good, um, he's got a very good outside of the UFC kind of thing. He's got, he's got a win over Aaron Pico in, in a pancreation tournament, which is cool. He's a multiple-time World Junior Grand Pit gra Grappling Pancreation Medalist, Arizona Golden Glove State Boxing Champion. And he's the IBJJF European Open Gold Medalist and a 2010 European Pancreation Grappling Gold Medalist. The point is, this guy's good. This guy's a lot better than I thought he was when I f first heard about the fight. You know what I mean? He's good. Clayton Carpenter is good. And I think that there's probably a good chance that he should be able to beat Stephen Arasig. As much as it hates me to say, hurts me to say, Clayton Carpenter is good. I didn't realize how good he was outside of the MMA. Erison Pahey, I believe this guy fought in Dana White's Contender Series. He did. He beat Lum Key. He's getting another ch opportunity this year. Edgar Chares, who's 8-3. and three. He's a Mexican fighter. Mex obviously, UFC trying to build up Mexico uh, Mexican fighters. Like They've got that guy from Dana White's Contender Series last year. And now they've got... Um, they've obviously got Brandon Roy Vaughn. Edgar, Edgar Chares could be one of those guys. So, yeah. He's got a great win on his record recently. 10-3 and three win. Very impressive, in my opinion. Aman Ashimov, who's 12-3, and three, a flyweight. Great wins on his record. Nine and no win there. Nine and three wins. Seven and three. Seventeen and three wins. Seventeen and five. Six and zero. Oh. Need I say more? Dana White's contender series worthy prospect in my opinion. Haley Cowan, who's six and two, not a Dana White's contender series worthy prospect. She lost to Kelly Clayton, who was one and two, literally a little bit more than a year ago. That's all I really need to say. Claudia Lisi is her opponent. I'm picking Claudia Lisi to win that fight. A little bit of a spoiler there, but I think that she should win. She's on a good win streak now after uh, she lost a couple of fights to, a, to I guess, just better opponents at the time. But she's made improvements. She's bounced back. She's fought good opponents. And now she's going to be fighting Hallie Cowan, who's got a very padded record. Teresa Blader, 5-0. Oh, great prospect, in my opinion. Beat a girl that was 9-1 and one most recently. In fact, the whole time, the whole time, her, her record has been good. She debuted against a girl that was 3-0. Oh. Then 3-2, a little bit salty, but still, you're 1-0 oh at the time. Not that bad. 7-3, and 10-7, and seven, and 9-1. and one. Very good. And she's got a 5-0 and oh amateur, uh, amateur record. And she's also got a tournament. I think this is an amateur tournament as well. Might even be a professional tournament. And she won that in Octagon as well. So yeah, she's got a lot of fights. She's got a lot more fights than just five. Nayara Maya, who is six and zero, oh, pretty good record, I guess you could say. But it's not like super, super, super stacked. You know what I mean? It's not like she's beaten any girl. So like six and zero, oh, seven and zero. Oh, but she does have beaten a girl that's three and zero. Oh, so good for her. Denise Gomez, who is five and one, and she's going to be in flyweight division. She's got a win over Milana Dudieva, who's twelve and eight. And a 3 0 win, and another 3 0 win, and another 3 0 win. <laughs> so good for her. She's on the five fight win streak. I think she deserves to be on here. Now, Carolina Wojcik. I love Carolina Wojcik as a prospect. She's got great wins on her record. Uh, she beat 3 1 girl, 9 5, 5 2, and a 4 0. A lot of split decision wins, though, to be fair. She's got an 8 1 amateur record as well. Like, I feel like Carolina Wojcik should definitely. Uh, probably she'll probably be one of the favorites uh, to win on Dana White's Contender Series this year. Sandra Lovato is a uh, ten and two, and she is uh, 20, 28 years old. Sorry, she's got a couple good wins on her record. She's got a couple of uh, bad losses on her record. Actually, no, they're not really that bad. There are two losses on the record are actually to the same girl, which is absolutely insane. I forgot about this. I talked about this girl earlier. Um, yeah. Two losses to the same girl, which is crazy. Uh, Maria Silva, 8-0, as I was talking about. She fought Dana White's Contender Series when she was 6-0. and uh, Beat Catherine Proprocki, who took the fight on short notice, only 3-1 and one girl. But she's fighting on the Ultimate Fighter this year, which is pretty cool. And uh, she, she recently beat a girl that was 6-0. and oh. This is pretty fair. I think if she wins on Dana White's Contender Series this year, she'll probably be in the UFC. 9-0 and oh record, I'm sorry, as a woman's strawweight. That is, that is not something to... To, to, to ignore and Rayanne Amanda 11 and 5 record but she has gone a little bit of a win streak over girls with with pretty salty records you know what I mean like debuting girls 0 and 5 and 0 and 1 but she's beaten them all inside the distance and you know what if you're a female fighter and you're winning inside the distance you're going to open some eyes it's like um Man and Furo everyone talks about Man and Furo's power everyone talks about um the submission ability of 
Mm, the Mexican money. She's a Mexican girl. I'm an idiot. Ignore that. <laughs> Ignore that. Um, it's going to come to me. She recently fought Melissa uh, Tracy Cortez and she Melissa Gardo. Melissa Gardo even talks about the finishing ability of Melissa Gardo as well. So yeah, good for good for Ray and Amanda. Uh, she was seven and five at one point. Now she's eleven and five fighting on Dana White's Contender Series. I can respect that. But yeah, that's it for the video, man. Hopefully you guys didn't mind it too much. I think it's going to be like half an hour long, 25 minutes. But that's a full breakdown of Dana White's Contender Series. That's all the fights, all the dates, all the fighters. Literally everything is packed into this video. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that one.